levothyroxine, the, the name for synthetically made uh, thyroid hormone, is the most commonly prescribed medication in the United States. There are millions of patients that take thyroid hormone. The thyroid, it's a butterfly-shaped gland that resides just below the Adam's apple. Unless it acts up, you probably never give it a thought. Problem is, it acts up for a lot of people. About 8 to 10 percent of women in the United States will have thyroid disease or dysfunction at some point in their life and two or three percent are men, perhaps more. And it would be Mayo Clinic's time. Dr. John Morris III is a gland specialist called an endocrinologist. He says a thyroid's main purpose is making essential hormones. The thyroid hormone is important in the metabolism of basically every, every cell, every tissue, every organ in the body. A century ago, Dr. Morris says a lot of patients coming to Mayo Clinic in Minnesota were seeking help for problems caused by thyroid hormone imbalances, often causing goiters, a swelling in the neck. He says performing surgery for thyroid goiters kept the Mayo brothers quite busy. And it was in fact that early business of the Mayo Clinic that was the uh, impetus to bring Edward Kendall to Mayo Clinic because there was a lot of thyroid disease here. Edward C. Kendall was a young chemist from New York who was obsessed with unlocking the thyroid secrets. So, in the southwest corner of the brand new and aptly named 1914 building, Kendall set up his lab and made good progress during his first summer and fall at Mayo Clinic, purifying thyroid compounds. And actually, as the story goes, he came in on Christmas Eve in 1914 uh, to do one additional round of purification and to try to crystallize this newest preparation. On Christmas morning, he went in to the laboratory and he had crystal powders of purified thyroid hormone. The first time the hormone from the thyroid that we now call thyroxine uh, had been purified. The discovery is the reason so many people have this potentially life-saving medication today. I mean, I could be dead actually by now. Angela Dispensieri is one of Edward Kendall's very appreciative fans. Never really been sick a day in my life and about five years ago started noticing, you know, fast heart rate and kind of feeling sweaty. and. Dr. Morris diagnosed Angela with Graves' disease, an autoimmune disorder in which the immune system attacks the thyroid gland. Her problem wasn't too little thyroid hormone, referred to as hypothyroidism, but too much, or hyperthyroidism. It affects the heart and the nervous system. It causes weight loss. Uh, it increases the metabolism so that the patients need to eat more and more in order to just maintain their weight. To shut off the out-of-control gland, Angela drank a radioactive iodine solution, basically killing her thyroid tissue. That means her body no longer produces any thyroxine. But she has an inexpensive, take-once-daily solution, thanks to Kendall's discovery. Some days I take the pill and I'm like, Wow, this is modern medicine. She should know, Angela is also Dr. Dispensieri, a Mayo Clinic cancer researcher credited with a number of groundbreaking discoveries herself. I mean, discovery in medicine is, is amazing then, it's, it's amazing now. Edward Kendall wasn't through. He was awarded a Nobel Prize in 1950 for his contributions to isolate and identify cortisone. His Nobel certificate and gold medal now reside in the Mayo Clinic archives. Considering Kendall had none of the highly advanced technology researchers rely on today, Dr. Morris says his accomplishments are even more impressive. The equipment was very large and bulky, huge glass beakers and vials and flasks and long tall columns filled with, with uh, gels. And yet, the mysteries Edward Kendall unlocked in his Mayo Clinic laboratories many decades ago will continue to help patients well into the future.